The Lord be with you. And also with you. with you. Welcome to our uh, videotaped worship service. Uh, today we celebrate Proper 11, which falls on July 19th. As we have been doing, we'll be using the service of prayer and preaching from the Lutheran service book, page 260. We'll be singing three hymns, hymn 818, hymn 645, and hymn 657. We begin with him 818 in the is glad.
first reading for proper 11 is from the prophet Isaiah chapter 44. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We read responsibly a portion of Psalm 119. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I increase your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. Though the courts of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I rise to praise you because of your righteous rules. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. Second reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, starting at verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the Spirit the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore again, the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, Lord I, love I love the habitation of your house and the, and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, Lord I love the habitation of your house and, and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. For our instruction in the small catechism, we have the first article of the Creed and its meaning. What is the first article of the Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land and animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need this body and mind. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of our really divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey. 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for our consideration today is our first lesson from Isaiah chapter 44, where the prophet writes this, Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is our text. Surprisingly, the word rock appears in a number of times in Scripture, 133 times in the ESV translation, according to my computer. Most of the time, it simply means rock. You know, those hard, roundish things that lay all over the place out there. The Bible talks about a rock that produced water, rocks that were built into altars, a rock used as a pillow, and rocks thrown at people for the purpose of killing them although usually these are called stones. Sometimes the word rock refers to a strong support, a firm foundation. The wise man built his house on the rock. Jesus said he would build his church on the rock of Peter's confession. A few times, like today's Old Testament lesson, rock means fortress, the thing into which you go for protection a safe refuge. People have always sought safe refuge. They've always wanted to live in fortresses. 3,200 years before Jesus, the ancient temple of Nessa Brodgar in Scotland was surrounded by a massive stone wall, which was called the Great Wall of Brodgar. This wall was built more than 5,000 years ago. Yet it was about four yards thick and four yards tall. That was an impressive fortress. That trend has continued through the years. Probably more fortresses have been built in the last hundred years than in the rest of history. Many individuals and communities, particularly in Europe, built their own air raid shelter in World War II. They protected against bombs dropped by the enemy. In America, people were more likely to build storm shelters that would protect them from hurricanes and tornadoes and other severe weather. Perhaps some of you have a storm shelter, although most of us consider our basement to be enough of a fortress. In the nation of Israel, a place where violence is more common than here, residents are required to build a Merkav Mugan, which means a protected space. It's a reinforced security room to be built into all new buildings by Israeli law. The room offers protection against bombs and high-impact projectiles and chemical weapons. In short, we seem rather obsessed with fortresses. We seek refuge, but it is elusive. We set up border security to protect ourselves from other countries, but people harm each other within our own country. We put in locks and alarms and security systems to pr protect ourselves from those outside our family, but get hurt by our own family members. We use seat belts and work boots and warnings to stay off the top step of the ladder to protect ourselves from physical harm, but get hurt emotionally. We do so many things to protect ourselves from harm coming from outside ourselves, but often lose our lives to heart problems or cancer or other things that come from within. We might even say from our own DNA. No matter how we protect ourselves and what we protect ourselves from, there is always evil and harm that can get us. You may think things are hopeless, but no. There is a fortress, a true fortress. There is a rock, a real protective rock. In our Old Testament lesson today, that fortress is described for us all. He is the Lord, the King of Israel, and he is the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. 
The name translated Lord is what scholars call the tetragrammaton, the four letters. Those letters, in English, we sometimes say Yahweh or Jehovah, were written in Hebrew without vowels. It was the name that could not be pronounced. It was the name that was used to describe the one who spoke to Moses from the burning bush and many other times in scripture. It is God. He also describes himself as the first and the last, the eternal God. He tells his people, Israel and us, that there is no other God. As God, he created everything and holds everything in his hand. Nothing is out of his control. And so God says, fear not. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. The true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Jehovah, is the fortress. He is the rock. There is no other. All the fortresses we manufacture for ourselves fall short. We can have a stronger military and more secure borders, and bad things will still happen. We can buy bigger locks and stronger homes, and bad things will still happen. We can make tremendous advances in medicine and receive more vaccines and develop more treatments. And there's still a 100% death rate. All the fortresses of this world, all the rocks that we manufacture for ourselves, are likely to fail. But don't be afraid. God is the rock. Don't look to the things of this world. Look to him. Don't trust your country to save you or your doctor to save you or your bank account to save you. God will save you. He holds the world in his hand. He created it and rules over it. All of the earth's resources are his. COVID won't bring an end to the world or racial violence or global warming. God will. It's under his control. The pandemic may seem entirely out of control at times. But the God who healed lepers and caused the blind to see still call, controls the health and well-being of his people. The earth may seem limited in its ability to provide for our needs and the future needs of our children and grandchildren, but those blessings are provided and controlled by God. They will not fail. More importantly, he holds your eternal life in his hand. When sin came into the world, death came into the world. But God also controls life and protects us from death. Jesus came and died for the sins of the world, for our sins. So death no longer has any power over us. The pandemic can harm us only for a time. Our fortress can protect us even from death. Everything is his. Everything is under his control. So when you are looking for a rock, a fortress, when you are looking for protection for your life here on earth and for the life to come, turn to Yahweh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the only true God. He is the rock, and there is no other. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their need. Almighty God, we are too quick to judge your ways and too bold to presume upon your wisdom. Grant us grace so that we may trust in your word and fulfill our baptismal vocation of worship, witness, prayer, and works of mercy, both to our families and to our neighbors in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, we are stewards of your creation, but we have often squandered its goodness and wasted its resources. Guide us to use wisely and for the benefit of all people the fruits of this good earth, 
and preserve its goodness for those to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we have been given new birth and baptism. Help us to confess your Son before the world, reflecting the glory of your kingdom to all people. Bless all pastors, missionaries, and church workers, that they may be faithful in their calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we enjoy great freedoms and blessing in our land. Bless our President, the Congress of these United States, our Governor, and all those who make, judge, and administer laws in our land. Give them wisdom in their actions for the protection of life and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of health, which we must never take for granted. Hear our prayers on behalf of the sick, the aged, the, the infirm, those who mourn, and those near death. Grant them healing according to your will and grace to sustain them in their need. We name them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, we too easily forget those in nursing homes, assisted living, and the homebound. Give us grace so that we may bring them your consolation and peace and give them the aid and comfort of your word and our fellowship in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we are wounded by the sufferings of this life, and we need your grace to sustain us in hope and equip us with patience. Give to us all that we need to pass through the day of trouble and be found faithful when Christ comes in his glory at the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle Lord, we ask you to visit the homes of your people, that they may be places of blessing and love, where faith is nurtured, and we learn to live out our new lives in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that what we pray for, we may work toward. Under the guidance of your Holy Spirit, that at the day of judgment we may be found worthy to join the saints and enter into your eternal light and life forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. <laughs>
The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
try to deal with them as best we can. Uh, we are worshiping on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Please bring a mask if you come to worship. We do have some here too if you come and don't have one. Uh, also, we are having a Bible study, which last Sunday we were able to meet outside, so we didn't wear masks. Uh, and it is on six o'clock at six o'clock Sunday evenings, and it's on finding comfort from God in difficult times. Uh, we will continue to meet Sundays uh, for probably the next uh, three Sundays. May God bless your week.